Hi, I'm SimSim and today I'll teach you how to hack WPA2 Wi-Fi networks. But before we do anything, we need to know what we are attacking. This is a four-way handshake. It consists of four EAPL messages, which stands for Extensible Authentication Protocol over LAN. It's responsible for establishing an encrypted session between the access point and the client. In the first message, the access point sends the A nonce to the client, which is just a random number. Then the client derives the PTK, which stands for Pairwise Transient Key, which is important to us, but we will come back to it later. In the second message, the client sends over the S nonce, which is its random number, and also the message integrity code, which we will also come back to later. After that, the access point derives the PTK and creates the GTK, which stands for Group Temporal Key. It is shared between all devices on the network and is used for broadcast and multicast traffic. Then, it's sent over in the third message alongside another make. And finally, the client sends an ACK, saying that everything is OK and it's ready to use encryption. Now, let's come back to PTK. It's calculated using a cryptographic function called PRF and it takes PMK, ANONS, SNONS and both MAC addresses. The PMK here stands for Pairwise Master Key and is calculated using another cryptographic function which takes the passphrase, the SSID and the number of iterations for the algorithm. Also, the message integrity code, which I talked about earlier, is just a hash of the message with the first 128 bits of the PTK. All of this is really important to us because for each password we want to try out when brute forcing, we can calculate the PMK, then the PTK using the captured data, and finally the message integrity code using the captured message and part of the PTK. And if the captured MIG and the one we just calculated is the same, we know that we have the correct password. Do not attack any network unless you own it or have permission from the owner. Now let's practice. For this part you will need a network adapter that supports both monitor mode and packet injection. We'll be using Aircrack NG, a suite of tools designed for Wi-Fi security. First, we'll use Airmon NG check kill to disable all processes that might interfere with our work. Then we can enable monitor mode by typing sudo ng start and the interface name. We can check the status of our interface by typing iwconfig. And now we can use aerodump ng to see the traffic around us. And that's it, we are now capturing the Wi-Fi traffic around us, but there are a few problems. First, as you can see in the top left corner, we are jumping between channels meaning that we are not capturing everything from a network that we picked to attack. And the second is that we didn't specify where to save the output. We can fix that by specifying the channel with dash C, the BSSID with dash D, and we can specify the output file name with dash W. And that's it. Now, if a host connects to the DDWRT network, we will get the handshake. But what if I don't want to wait, especially that a host is already connected to the network? We could use the authentication frames to force the client to reconnect. We can use AirPlay for that, with dash dash D off set to zero to deauthenticate all stations, and with dash A set to the BSSID and everything followed by the interface that we use for the attack. And as you can see, after a second, in the top right of our AirDump window, we can see WP8 handshake followed by the BSSID of our network. Now we can stop our attacks and crack the handshake. First, we need to convert the raw capture packet data into a format that is useful to us. For that, we'll use HCX tools. From these tools, we'll use HCX pickup ng tool to convert the capture file to a hashcat readable format. The only thing that we need to specify is the input and the output file. Now we can crack the password. 
but for that I'm going to move to a device that has a GPU to make it faster. Now I'll use Hashcat in straight mode with the famous Roku TXT word list. I also have to disable the pod files since I've cracked this while testing for this video. And as you can see, in seconds I got the password Spiderman080403. And that's all. Now you know how to attack WPA2 Wi Fi networks. And seeing how easy it is, please do not use these kinds of passwords. And also advise your friends and families not to do that. Also, if you can, you could switch to WPA3 to stay safer. That's all, and thank you for watching.